Enscape's latest update for Mac ignites the power of Apple Silicon, proving it isn't just for hipsters and YouTubers anymore. This update isn't just a sprinkle of pixie dust, it's a full-blown workflow revolution that will have you pumping out photorealistic renders faster than the first comment down below. This update isn't just about speed though. Enscape has finally heard our cries and packed in a ton of features we've been begging for, including improved image capture, meaning your renders just got a hell of a lot better and you didn't have to do a single thing. How's that for subscribe worthy? They've also added a material library on absolute massive steroids. This update is more than a game changer. It's a paradigm shift. And if you're ready to see it in action, we're about to press play. All right, so as you can see, we have Arcad 27 open on the one side of the screen and also Enscape on the other. This is the brand new update for Enscape, so we're gonna be sharing some incredible new features. First of all, let's jump across to Archicad and load up the materials library. The Enscape materials library is filled with so many goodies. And I'm so thankful that they finally added this in to Enscape for Mac because it was desperately missing from the last version. So as you can see, we have bricks, we have concrete, fabrics, glass, everything. Glass is one of my most impressive features ever to be added in to Enscape or any rendering software because glass you can just never get right. So by having a series of available options for us here to use, it makes life just that little bit easier and our renders just that little bit better. Same if we would go to our wood, we'd have some incredible selections of wood that we wouldn't have previously available to us. So potentially we might be looking at something like this wood 02 in the chevron pattern for our interior renders, or we might be using these wood planks on the exterior. So let's say we wanna import this one here, let's import that selection, which means now let's select this wood over here, open up our material library, in Archicad and search for wood, you'll see wood 09 planks. We press OK. Now it's automatically changed that on our Enscape file as well as our Archicad file so that it is updated. Now obviously it is the wrong way around, so we have to adjust that in Archicad manually because it is imported as its own texture into Archicad perfectly. So if we simply open up our surfaces, rotate at 90 degrees, you'll see it perfectly aligns and in Enscape, if we fly in now, it's also beautiful texture where we wanted it to be. They've also improved their material editor library. So let's load that wood 09. We have all of the individual items there as before. Let's say we wanna make it pink. Maybe we wanna make it black, tying it in and finishing it off super quickly without ever having to affect the actual Archicad model itself. And if we go across, Look at that texture, it is incredibly well detailed, especially compared to that original texture I used and imported directly from Archicad itself. So here down the middle, you can see a vast difference in quality in material and depth, which is only ever gonna make your renders so much better. Now that quickly covers our new material library, which is incredible. It is definitely one of my favorite things in this entire update. But what we also have is batch rendering. So let's say you've created a series of screenshots, you've got your drone front, your front street, and potentially your left view. Previously, you would have had to export them one by one. Now we have fantastic batch export. So instead of hitting the individual screenshot export, you can hit batch rendering, select all three, and then hit render images. In that instance, it'll export all of your images, and you'll be able to view them as batch exported renders. Now, this render from the front, I haven't touched. The only thing I've changed in this latest update is the timber cladding right here in the sunlight. Enscape claims that this update will significantly improve your image capture without you having to do a single thing. So what I'm about to do is leave this image and place the original image I exported from the previous version of Enscape and place them side by side for a direct comparison. Now, to be fair, I did move the yellow car across and take out this gray car from these renders, but without changing a single thing, you can see there are vast improvements to these renders. First of all, if we take a look at the lights and shadows on the actual concrete itself, the newest render being on the right-hand side here, and the old render being on the left-hand side for those that weren't paying attention, 
You're gonna see the concrete, the lights, and the shadows is significantly improved. We don't have that blown out image as we previously did. We also have a lot more texture and depth in the trees, in the foreground and the background. And our characters have a little bit of more warmth to the overall scene. Now I haven't changed any of these settings. It was a direct open of both systems to export these images. Overall, I definitely think it has improved. I think they have made a phenomenal enhancement from just a minor update, which is actually proving to be quite a major one. What we didn't previously have in the last version of Enscape, which was a huge surprise to me as well, was video editing capabilities. So now we actually have the ability to export videos in Enscape, not just still images as we did before. So if we were to create one keyframe here, start by swinging around to the front of the property, showing the absolute front beautiful facade that we've created, hit the plus again, and then finally swing around to the other side of this house, hit our final plus button and press the play. We'll see a beautiful slow transition from the front to the back and it will create a very nice video. Obviously we can do so much more with this. We can ease in and out. We can have a shaky camera if we're trying to create movement. But overall, we now have video in our Enscape. What I do want to see and what is critical is the export quality of this video. So I'm going to hit the export button and see you guys in a minute. Okay, so that took about 15 minutes to export that entire video. And personally, I would have loved to see a countdown timer saying 10 minutes, five minutes, three minutes left instead of a percentage bar, but that's okay. Now, this is gonna be the first time we both watch the first export from the brand new Enscape update together. So we have it ready in full screen mode. Let's press play. Overall, actually, this is quite impressive. You see the trees moving you see the actual shadows moving as well. 20 seconds overall total scene. It's quite inviting. It's quite pleasant. It looks very, very, very good. I'm impressed with the shadows over the texture that we've placed on this garage. I'm overall impressed with the sky as well and the highlights and the shadows. Personally, I think this is an exceptional render for something that I took about five seconds to do. It didn't take me very long to export this whatsoever. We'll play it through once more. Obviously, if I put a bit more time and effort into this, this could be significantly better, but it was just a first time render to see the quality. Overall, you can still see even on a Mac Studio with an Ultra M1 chip, you still have a bit of blurring and a bit of hazing because the ray tracing isn't perfect. I'd love to try this with the new M3 Max chip, Potentially, this would be even better than what we're seeing right now. And this is exported in Ultra HD. So overall, I think it's a fantastic update with only one last feature that we haven't talked about. Now, as an Arcade user, this doesn't interest me that much. However, there are many of you out there that aren't exclusively on Archicad. This latest update for Enscape also allows you V-Ray scene export which is in beta testing and also Rhino 7 support. Previously, we only had SketchUp, Vectorworks and Archicad. Now we're also blessed with Rhino 7. If you're new to the channel, let's have a quick little interlude and get to know each other. First of all, my name is David Tomich, I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And my goal is to give you as much architectural content as humanly possible. I want to reveal the industry secrets that people are not sharing. The things that you do not learn at university, that you do not get taught in the real world, that you just have to find out through trial and error. That's what this channel is for. That's what we've been doing for the past four years. The goal for 2024 is to grow this channel as much as we possibly can. So we wanna take it from about 46,000 where it stands today, all the way up to 100,000 subscribers. I'm hoping that you're gonna be able to help us with that goal by simply smashing the subscribe button down below and that's it. That's all we have to do. If you're interested in more of what I do, there is a link down below to my website, davidtomich.com.au, which has a series of architectural products, all the way from basic construction checklists for those that are new to the architecture game, to architectural project trackers for Excel that can calculate every dollar from the builder's quote. And of course, if you've accelerated your architectural career, you're starting your own projects, there is a full custom architectural brief available for you to use with your clients to be able to pinpoint the exact project, the exact needs of every single person that walks in your door. 